Hi, I'm Charlie, and this is Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders is available both as a podcast, wherever you get great podcasts, and on video on our YouTube channel, Cooking Secrets for Men. So today I'm very pleased as my, to have as my guest, Betty Hill. Betty, good to see you. You too, Charlie. So Betty is the uh, Director of Youth Development for Mentor Greater Milwaukee, and she's also on the list of 40 Under 40, which is a list of our emerging leaders here in the city who have accomplished a lot in a short period of time. So congratulations for being on that list. Thank you, Charlie. Um, so we'll get to uh, Mentor Greater Milwaukee and, and some of the other work you do in the community in just a minute, but sure. I'd like to start where we usually start, which is at the beginning. So you're born and raised here in Milwaukee. Absolutely. So talk about your, your early years and how they helped shape uh, who you have become. Well, my earlier years, um, so growing up in the 90s, um, started at NPS, Richard mm-hmm. Kluge. Um, I grew up in a family of faith, church girl, um, dad a minister, mom missionary, um, sang in the choir. Church was a big part of my life. It still is, but that was just like, you know, my grandmother pastors both are pastors uncles pastors so it's all through my veins but um the fun times growing up neighborhood um kids coming to our block uh attended the neighborhood school mm-hmm. um what part of town we lived on the north side okay. so near west line uh, oh, sure. Silver okay. spring mm-hmm. um and uh, that's why we went to Richard Kluge because the school was right up the sure. street. Um, and I always wanted to go to the neighborhood center, uh, Silver Spring Neighborhood Center, because uh-huh. um, all the kids would go there after school. But we went home. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just have a great fond um, childhood men- memories in our neighborhood, um, whether it's playing kickball in the alley or tag. Um, it was always fun. And then um, from elementary going to Richard Kluge NPS, we transitioned to private schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and I graduated high school from St. John and Tita. Okay. Um, all girls school, mm-hmm. which I was like, Dad, why do I have to go here? I said, no boys. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Keeping me away from boys. But uh, he did negotiate with me after he saw I was so devastated. And maybe one of my aunties had a conversation with him because my sisters, one of my sisters went to King, Rufus King. Uh-huh. Another, uh, my brother and my sister went to um, Mesmer. So it's five of us. All right. And then my younger sister went to uh, Milwaukee High School of the Arts. Okay. And here I am at St. Joan and Tita. Mm-hmm. So um, you went to Alverno for college. Yes. Um, great school here in Milwaukee. Uh-huh. Um, what was your plan after graduation, or did you have one? <laughs> Charlie, that journey. <laughs> so I went to... Alverno right after high school. So uh-huh. as an 18 year old, I was there for a couple of years and then I was end up pregnant with my daughter. Mm-hmm. So that caused me to take a pause. And so when you speak to plan after college, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. But I always was determined to finish. So I ended up going back to, I went to MATC. Mm-hmm. And, but there was nothing like Alverno. Right. So I went back to Alverno. Um, they had an information. Um, over the weekend they had like an information session and um, I knew they offered weekend courses and at the time when I first went I wanted to be a nurse and I took on some uh, nursing assistant courses through Aurora Healthcare Mm -hmm. and I did it I think I got to anatomy and physiology at um, MATC and plus being a nursing assistant I said no I want to help people, (laughs) but not in this way. You know, I don't know what capacity. So I was thankful that Alverno hosted that information session because I always liked the environment at Alverno. I always appreciated the staff and just like that self-assessment in the community there. So I wanted to get back to that, especially being a mom. You know, I needed that weekend college, the flexibility. Um, They don't have it any longer. I know they discontinued it. I don't know if they started anymore. But at that time, I needed it. And so that's when I learned about community leadership and development. So I'm like, this is how I want to help. So 
I knew I wanted to help. I just didn't know what capacity. I knew that that was just a part of my, you know, purpose in this right. earth, right? And so Alverno helped me kind of articulate that and figure out what that looks like through community leadership and development. And it was such a broad range. So nonprofit management, grant writing, fundraising, social movement, social change, grassroots organization, um, marketing, business, right. was all a part of this uh, major and I'm like I need that that's what I want to do and I didn't know what it would um, ignite in me right. I just knew that it spoke to what I wanted at that time right. um, so before uh, Mentor Greater Milwaukee you worked in the youth social justice system so talk a little bit about that I did so um, as I was completing my degree um I was always that person. Like I was in corporate America at the time, and I'm just like. At first, I thought about climbing a corporate ladder, and then I, um, I knew I just did not want to f finish there. I knew that wasn't my end. So, um, as I completed my degree, I came across the opportunity to work for what was Southwest Key here in Milwaukee, and um, it's so cool because. I, well, this part isn't cool, but I interviewed. <laughs> I interviewed for this position, and I didn't get the job. But they called me back, mm -hmm. and they said, we just, we actually have a, a position open, but it's like a dual role. And so that's where I began to work with youth in the youth justice system, and I was a case manager, and I also was um, our mentor and recruitment and retention specialist to retain mentors, recruit mentors, and provide mentors to the youth who were maybe court ordered or um, needed that resource at that time. So that's how I got introduced to that after graduating from Alverno. Okay. Yeah. So um, that I'm sure paved the way, speaking of recruiting and retaining mentors, to get involved with uh, Mentor Greater Milwaukee. And you also have, I know you have a passion project mm -hmm. called Power Girls. So let's, let's talk about Power Girls first and then let's uh, roll into uh, Mentor Greater Milwaukee. Yeah, because it's actually perfect because Power Girls came about um, as I was completing my undergrad at Alberno. Um, at that time, my daughter was younger and I just, was, I was looking for things for her to get involved in um, that didn't cost me a lot of money because I couldn't really afford it at that time. Right. And um, there were a lot of great programs. They're just they were just catered to older children, like teenagers. And how old was uh, your daughter about this? She's eight at that time. Yeah. she's about seven, seven eight, okay. somewhere around there. Okay. Um, and. I couldn't find anything. And then also while I was in school, you know, doing social movement, social change, and learning about how how to um, mobilize um, in social justice. And one of the things that I noticed in the city of Milwaukee, human sex trafficking, was we were known at that time as number one. I don't know what the status is right now, but we were the number one hub, unfortunately, for Yikes. that. Yeah, horrible. And the ages of the girls were very young. I watched a documentary, and that just kind of ignited something in me mm -hmm. to where I'm like, well, how can I volunteer? How can I get involved? And I won't forget, Charlie, I had this nightmare. I say a dream, but it was a nightmare of, and I think God gave me this dream, really, because it was like girls being abducted and taken, and I'm just like, well, God, why would I have this dream? And it was just like a prompting for me to do what I can do because I know we have people like Dana World Patterson and um, people who are intentionally doing the work to eradicate human sex trafficking but how can I come into this space and offer what I have and that's how Power Girls came about which we started intentionally with girls at the age of six because mm -hmm. when I was looking at the documentary the ages were getting younger and younger and then I thought about me, how, you know, sometimes when you become a teenager or you go your own way, you, um, you don't listen to your parents. Yes. And then yeah. you when you get so to a point where it's like, oh, 
I remember what someone said to me to get me back on track. Right. So my thought with Power Girls was empowering girls at an early age so that whatever seeds we plant early on, whether you hit a hard time or you keep soaring, you always remember the things that you gained from Power Girls. And I, I did want to get to a point where it was ages 6 through 12 mm -hmm. and then transition the girls to uh, programs that exist for teenagers, right. you know? And there's there are some in the community that are very good. Absolutely. Actually, now, now talk about uh, Mentor Greater Milwaukee. Yeah, so Mentor Greater <laughs> Milwaukee, um, that ties kind of into when I was working with Youth, youth Justice, yeah. right? Um, it's so funny because the executive director at the time at Mentor Greater Milwaukee, I remember seeing her. She came and invited us. So remember, I'm into mentoring, recruiting. Right. So um, she invited us to like their opening and some other events that they had. And I just remember in my personality, Charlie, I will just go up and say, hey, or kind of speak my mind sometimes, uh -huh. which is good. And then sometimes it's like, oh, bring it back. So I saw her and I'm like, you just look so busy like she was just running like a chicken with her head like with his head cut off and right. i'm just like you need help <laughs> i said that to her and she said i know i know i'm looking to create a position now so when i get the position i'm gonna send it to you i was like yes please send it to me so i could share it with other people my mind was you know i'm gonna help her find someone to fill this job and so when she finally sent it to me i read it and i'm like i could do this you know, so I applied and boom, here I am. <laughs> we call that the Dick Cheney, where Dick Cheney was supposed to be on the committee or the commission to look for the vice president for Bush. And then I says, well, that's me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're, you're junior Dick Cheney. Mm -hmm. No offense. No, um, not to <laughs> um, so uh, talk a little bit about your family. Yeah, um, I have a beautiful family. Like I mentioned, I have um, five. It's five of us have four siblings mm -hmm. uh, we're all close like really close it's so funny i was talking to my nephews yesterday and they were kind of <laughs> butting heads and i'm like i would never do this to my siblings like m my sister and i growing up we would argue you know we shared rooms right. you know with it being five of us and um we just always just grew up really close um my parents had it that way we look out for each other um i have my mother passed away in 2020. Love her so much. I'm actually named after my mom. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm named after nice. her. Yeah. And um, her and my dad raised us. Um, we grew up in a two-parent parent home. Um, my mother, um, we grew up in the space where she was an entrepreneur, group homes. Um, so my sister now actually carried that. My mom taught her how to do that. But she was always, my mother was always the person who would help the mom with her baby in a stroller on on a bus stop and give her a ride home uh -huh. um give you a ride to the grocery store and we're in the back seat like mom we don't know these people but that was just her heart my dad hard worker always um known him to be a hard worker entrepreneur he's always just business savvy like that um and i have a daughter Mm -hmm. uh, she's 18 now, so think about back then. Yikes. <laughs> so she's 18 now, a senior at Nicolet High School. Mm -hmm. uh, so she, she'll she be starting college this fall. Um, I have one brother. I have, a, what, three, four nephews, two nieces, uh, one brother-in-law. So our family is pretty awesome. My granny has a host of siblings i have experienced all my grandparents which is a blessing mm -hmm. um but i have two still living right now okay yeah. let's grab that apron right over there yes. so we usually like to give an apron so you don't get your your brooklyn bridge Yay. uh so, so um this is so cool this is serious people with serious jobs having a little fun so we're having a little fun today so what are we preparing well we are preparing one of my fast simple easiest dish dishes but you're gonna spice it up for us spaghetti uh -huh. um now i do like to cook i will say that okay. i do like to cook i like to explore um but i thought this was something that i could even learn a little bit better from the An italian of, yes so why not the italian teaching pasta still uh -huh. figure um yeah so we we do uh we've done a little prep work 
uh, back here. So we're gonna get organized and then we'll walk back to the, the cooking area and we'll, we'll put this together. So we'll be right back. See you then. All right, so we're here over at the cooking area. We've got some, we're gonna make garlic bread. We've got um, some pasta water boiling, yes. and then we're going to cook our sauce in here. Okay. So um, why don't you start uh, with some olive oil. Put, a, a... So put some olive oil in the pan. It's already heating. And Keep going? a little bit more. Okay. So we'll, good? yeah, that's good. Okay. So we're going to fry the um, onions and the garlic in that. So we can go ahead and um, start with the pasta. Okay. So why don't you actually put this, there's, that's a salt shell, salt cellar right here. This here? Yeah. Okay. So grab a couple of uh, spoons full of salt okay. and we'll put them in. Is it sea salt or regular? Yeah, that's regular. Well, kosher sea salt. Okay. One of them. Um, let's, you don't need this right this second. Okay. Um, all right, so the reason you salt pasta water is to make it taste like the sea mm -hmm. and also it stops the pasta from sticking. Mm -hmm. Don't put oil in your pasta. Um, <laughs> don't do it. Don't put oil in. Wouldn't it so, be kind of slimy? Yes. So here's the, why don't you put the, we're going to put a pound of pasta in. The whole, the whole thing. thing. Do you break yours? No, <laughs> no, no. No, no. <laughs> Non-Italians may do that, but it's Italian. Me, I'm, I'm a non-Italian. All right, so what you want to do here is just kind of push it, you know, a little. That, like that? Well, more side to side. So you're getting the water on it. Oh, like, like that. Right, and then the water will force oh, it to come down. Oh, look at that. All right, and then you want to keep going until you get it as much in the water as possible. All right. Charlie, you are teaching me something new, making my so life roll around easier. a little bit. So spread go. it through. Yeah, and so you, the, okay. it'll get burned up top. Uh, so you want to get it into the pan as much as possible. And then once it gets in, it'll come to a boil, and then it'll cook. And that's all we have to do for the pasta. You do want to stir it every once in a while, so that's why you keep that spoon handy. Okay. And then get everything into the water. All right, the next thing we'll do... We once, here, this is me helping. <laughs> grab those. There we go. All right, we're all in the water. Okay, so let's make our compound butter. Okay. For So we're going to take, in this orange bowl here, we're going to put some butter. I would put uh, a bunch, one, one more like that. Okay. So a couple of big tablespoons of butter. Is that good? Yes. Okay. And we got some garlic right here. How much garlic do you want to yeah. I'm Italian, so you're asking the wrong person. Okay. So that's a tablespoon. That's good. Okay, that's good for the garlic. Okay. And then we chop some parsley right here. So I want you to put that parsley into the, the whole butter. bowl. The whole bowl. Right. Okay. And then you can stir it around here. Get it all incorporated. All right, so this is going to be for our garlic butter. And I'm going to... I've never made my own garlic bread before. That's good. Okay, so let's come over here and bring that knife that you were using. Here we go. And we're just going to put it on the garlic bread. There we go. Yeah, so it's very simple. Just the butter, garlic. That looks um, so good. And you can put salt and pepper on if you like. Yeah. Um, Would you put cheese on this? You can, too, or sure. Not? If you want. We're not doing that today. No. But yeah, some people, you know, you put any kind of cheese you want. You know, this, this is a blank canvas. Okay. I'll do the same for the other one. And so this is the, we have the, the oven on at uh, 400. So we're going to put it in. Put it in. Okay. Actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's, we can put it in. Um, All right, here um, we go. We're going to put it in for about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. And we'll watch that. So, so let's go ahead and start here with our um, onions and garlic. Woo! There we go. Yeah, there's our onions. All right. And then garlic? Yep. Okay, do you want a tablespoon again? 
Uh, yeah, and we need to make sure we stir this because garlic will burn. Okay. That's good. I even we're going to stir this, get this a little softened, so the onions, most onions will kind of dissolve the longer you cook them. Yeah. Adds a little sweetness, mm -hmm. and adds a little um, texture. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing good here. So why don't we go ahead and grab our, we're using ground turkey today instead of ground beef. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Why don't you put in the ground turkey? So that the um, main thing you want to do with ground turkey which is a very simple thing to remember. Get all the pink out. When all the pink is gone, it's cooked. Come on, we're doing that. Grab some of that spices right there. There's the Italian spices. Mm -hmm. This is, let me show my, this is my sister's blend, Awesome Annie. Yeah, so Italian cool. spices. So you put it, you do mostly for taste. We don't really measure a whole lot. A little yeah. bit more. That's good, all right? And then do we want to do the yeah, salt, a little salt pepper. So I got a little salt, pepper. This is our blend, salt, pepper, onion, garlic. Did you make this blend or? Well, I yeah, I stole it from a friend of mine, but yes. Yeah. So keep going. We're good. Good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So we want to get back to stirring. It smells so good. I feel like a real Italian right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna smell like garlic when you go home. So. Mm -hmm. I love garlic. So you can see that they're starting to get rid of a lot of the pink, but we're going to get rid of all of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once we get rid of all of it, then we're going to put the sauce in. So Charlie, you were saying how you um, got started with this. I think this is so cool. Yeah, I, I, actually my wife and I were watching a show called Selena Plus Chef, where mm -hmm. Selena Gomez, mm -hmm. who's a multimedia star in everything under the sun, mm -hmm. uh, has Selena. this cooking show where she has famous chefs like Jose Andres and... Marcus Samuelson, Rachel Ray come in, mm -hmm. actually on video, or um, they're virtual, mm -hmm. so they're cooking in each other's kitchens, mm -hmm. and they, she, the chef is teaching them how to cook something, and then um, halfway through, she starts talking about to the chef, so tell us about your charity, or your foundation, or your, your non-profit work, and they did that, and then my wife and I were watching, and she said, she turned to me and says, you can do that. Yeah. So I, you know, we do know a lot of the no people in, in town who are working in the nonprofit area. Mm -hmm. So we started contacting a few who I knew were very good cooks. Yeah. Like Wendy Bauman was my first guest from oh, Wibbick. cool. And yeah. she's a great cook. Uh-huh. And um, so it just kind of took off from there. We just, you know, come, people come over, we have a good time, we have a little fun. Yeah. And I always have good meals. Yeah. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's not a lot of grease. There's liquid. There's liquid. But, but that, is, that is not grease. Yeah. So, uh, and that'll cook down once we put the sauce in. Okay. So I think we are. Yeah, we're doing good. I think that's a cool story. That just shows the power of um, having the, you know, the right partner, good support. You know, her encouraging your gifts and talents, you know? Absolutely. She's a great that. partner. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we got all the pink out. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to do two things. So I'm gonna, here's a jar of, this is my favorite, it's actually it's Kroger marinara sauce. Okay. I don't know why, um, but I do like it. So just toss this in. Okay. Well, you want, you're going to need the top in just a second. Okay. So we put the sauce in. Alright. Prego. Uh-huh. <laughs> But I'm going to start doing marinara. Well, marinara is, is a type of sauce. This is Kroger brand. Uh -huh. It's just a house brand. So, um, let's show the bottle. There's stuff still in the bottle. So we're going to take a little bit of red wine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, and so put the top back on. It was an old Italian trick. Mm -hmm. Water or wine or whatever. And then shake it up and down. Alright. So we're going to Take the top off and then now pour it into the sauce. Look at that. All right, she put a little wine in, Good got all the stuff. drippings. And then another thing I like to add is some um, diced tomatoes. Okay. And these happen to have uh, basil, garlic, and onion in them, so it gives it a little texture. All right, and another thing, never throw out your pasta water because you may need it. Okay. So for if we were not I using wine, mm -hmm. we would have used pasta water. Oh. Okay. okay. Keep the flavor, yeah. right? All right? Let's take a look at our gar our garlic bread and see how we're doing. Let's see how we do. 
I need a little more time. Okay. It smells good. It smells good. We have done about 95%. So I'll teach you one other trick that Italians do. Okay. All right. So um, Let's go for it. Grab the handle of the pasta mm -hmm. and bring it closer to the, the sauce. We finish pasta in the sauce. So oh. take the you take the pasta uh -huh. and just put it right into the sauce. Wow. Okay. Bring it over. Uh huh. And put it all in, and it's still got a little pasta water on it, which is fine. Okay. And that'll just go in. So this is so you're learning Italian stuff. I am. Wine in the in the in the jarred pasta if you're not making your own. Uh huh. Uh, save your pasta water. Salt in the pasta. Uh -huh. You gave and me then, a little vocabulary. Yeah. And then we'll, once we get all that in, then we'll, we'll stir it around and we'll serve from the, um, and you can see none of the pasta is sticking together at all. Um, perfect. We got a few people that are going to be eating with us today. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be very happy with what we've put together. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good? Yeah. So we have one more thing to do. I want to clean up a little bit and then we'll be right back. All right. So. Here's our pasta, but we're going to do one more thing. And Betty's going to make uh, some, we do have the garlic bread. I'm, I'm, I'm watching that so it doesn't burn. So we have some basil here, some basil leaves, and we're going to make what's called a chiffonade, which is just a fancy way to say little ribbons. Mm -hmm. So you take your three or four basil leaves, and you put them all together, and you're going to roll them. I know you don't, you've never rolled anything, so it's... <laughs> so I'll gonna, take it this we're way. We're not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> so we roll, and then we're going to slice um, with the knife very thin. All right, so we go like that. All right. And just watch your fingers. Good I didn't have my nails on today. <laughs> All right, and so this is going to, we're going to just put this on top of the pasta so as a little... A uh, little flavor for basil because that's a perfect complement for Italian meals. Not thin enough? Yeah. Okay, good. Then are we going to go through the whole... That one was pretty thick. And then you can either, chiffonade. as they are, chiffonade. chiffonade. Now you're speaking French. Speaking yeah. Italians. Spaghetti is Italian. Chiffonade French. Mm. And uh, we don't know. All right, so let's take them and just kind of spread them around on the pasta. There we go. That's so pretty. Yeah. So instead of whole basil leaves, which no one is going to eat, you make a little, um, little, little ribbons. ribbons. All right. And we have some Parmesan cheese. Look at that. So pretty. I've All right. <laughs> so nothing left to do but give it a taste. Give it a taste. All right. So we'll be right back and and figure out how good this stuff really is. Okay. All right. Here we are. I'm back. So, Betty. Yes. Tell us what we have here delicious authentic <laughs> pasta we have spaghetti so in our spaghetti we have chunks of tomatoes uh sweet marinara sauce with a hint of wine and we also have um ground turkey ground turkey and i'm thinking of our garnish i can't chiffonade chiffonade and a chiffonade of basil ribbons yeah. over the pasta and then we have a little Parmesan cheese, Parmigiano. definitely, and garlic Parmigiano. bread. Show us the garlic bread. And then our garlic bread. Oh, yeah, look we, at ooh, that! Ooh, ooh. It's so this beautiful. This is enough for both of us, I think. Yes, it is. All right, you're the guest, so <clears throat> let me give you. Okay. That. Give me some chiffonade in there. Look yeah, at the, that. What we were talking about it, the basil. A lot of people just put the basil leaf on top. Uh -huh. um, you know, but no one's going to eat that. So if you put a little. Uh, smaller fresh basil in that gets incorporated into the, the pasta itself. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, grab a little garlic bread. Yes. Don't take it all because I want some. And tell me twice. Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty. And then some Parmesan cheese. Parmigiano. Alrighty. There we go. <clears throat> Never too much. No such thing. <laughs> All right, if you'd grab me a, well, grab me a piece a of, yeah, I better take two because they're small. Mm -hmm. I definitely took two. All I right. should have took three. So, little <laughs> par parmigiano. Mm -hmm. All righty. Now put my lap. 
Oh, you already have yours in, so you're well-trained. I am. <coughs> All right. I'm not. I'm a slob. Yum, yum, yum. I'm a guy. All right. We gotta See say how grace. we did. Do it. We gotta say grace. Oh, I'll say, say grace. Forgot. Well, God, thank you so much for this opportunity to get to know Charlie and be on his show today and sharing the good news of what's happening in the city of Milwaukee. And thank you for this food that has been prepared, let it nourish our bodies and bring health to our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I grew up Catholic. I'm still Catholic. I go to church every Sunday, but yeah. I don't say well, grace, grace I, enough. I told you in the beginning. Yes, you It's all are. in me. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is fine. Let's go for it. <laughs> All right. Twirly twirls. So what's the spoon in the fork? For non-Italians. <laughs> I feel like, it, I don't know why you have to feel like you have to twirl your spaghetti on something, but mm -mm. we don't. We don't cut it. No. I mean, you do twirl it, but that's how you get it on your fork. You just... This mm. is so good, Charlie. It's delicious. Definitely need a to-go plate. Mmm. You did a good job. Well, you made it. The thing about ground turkey, you can't tell the difference, especially when you put in a sauce and all that stuff. So we had, my boys were probably in high school at least, if not getting ready to go to college. Mm-hmm. Before they found out that we had been using ground turkey in chili, in spaghetti sauce, mm -hmm. in just about everything. Mm -hmm. So they saw the package and go, this is ground turkey? I said, hey, you, <laughs> you've been eating it since you were four years old. So, you know, I think you're okay. I mm -hmm. think you'll live. So you really <laughs> cannot tell the difference um, mm -mm. in this texture. We had, um, who was on? Um, oh, gee. Um, cheese clippers. He did the turkey burgers. Made turkey burgers. I and love turkey burgers. You, the way that he put them together and made spiced them up, mm -hmm. cannot tell the difference. How'd you like it? Oh, I have yet to have a bad meal on this show, so. Yeah. And this fits right in. How could we have a bad meal? You're going to guide us to make sure we're right. Right? Yeah, but it's, this is simple. This mm -hmm. is simple cooking. Mm -hmm. We didn't do anything. There's nothing here that you can't buy at Metro Market and then put together in a half an hour on a weeknight. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm and proud. That's how, how most people cook. They did great. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. can taste the ribbon. The basil? <laughs> yes. Chopinade. Yeah. The closer herbs are to fresh, the more um, expressive and pungent the taste. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm. So Betty, before you take another bite, which you just did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go for it. I want to thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Can we do this again when you're um, not having your mouth full? <laughs> 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 so this is where we edit. Thank you for having me. This was such a good time, such a pleasure for me. Um, although it was learning a little bit more about me, it's just it's a different outlet, and mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate the the creativity of it, the different outlets to share the good news about Milwaukee because it's a lot of it. Well, my wife is fond of saying that cooking is the only creative outlet that she has. I mean, she, she works very hard and she's she worked does. all her life, but mm -hmm. um, that is different than going into a kitchen and creating something. Even simple, a jar of sauce, a jar of tomatoes, um, store-bought pasta, you know, it, but it's simple. Yeah. And it, you can make anything simple taste good. So mm -hmm. again, thanks so much for coming. Thank continue you. Continue the great work mm -hmm. in uh, Milwaukee. So you can be on the uh, 80 under 80 list soon <laughs> in about 40 years. Um, thanks so much for uh, watching and listening to Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. We love doing this show, mm -hmm. shining a spotlight on those trying to make a difference in our city. Um, and now the younger generation is, is coming to the forefront Yay. and uh, flexing their muscles and, and trying to make a difference in our city. Absolutely. So until next time. Thanks for 
supporting Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. See ya. Thanks for listening to another episode of Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders is brought to you by Cooking Secrets for Men, LLC, and was recorded in the Third Ward in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We feature and profile community leaders who are trying to make Milwaukee a better place. The tagline is, serious people with serious jobs having a little fun. Our guests choose the recipes that we use on the show. All of our podcasts are available on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you get great podcasts. The original YouTube video for this episode is available on our YouTube channel, Cooking Secrets for Men, All Rights Reserved. Thanks, and see you next time on Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders.